Look at that. Oh my gosh. And if you look straight down, now that makes your knees wobble. After visiting for the first time this spring, Ingleton Waterfalls Trail now has to be one of my favourite days out in the Yorkshire Dales. With crashing waterfalls, bubbling rivers, rolling hills and tranquil woodland, it's clear to see why this is such a popular attraction. I have split this video into two parts. In the first part, we will take you along with us as we explore the trail, and in the second part I will cover the practical information that you should know before you visit Ingleton Waterfalls. We've just arrived at Ingleton Waterfalls Trail. It's a beautiful day. Look at that sky. We've just parked up and now we're going to go to the ticket office, pay our admission and then go see some waterfalls. We've just paid, it was eight pounds an adult. It says here that the trail is a circular route and it's four and a half miles long and takes from two and a half hours to four hours to complete the route. You start the walk by following the river twist just here on the right. It's really lovely and peaceful. There's hardly anyone around at the moment. We can hear all the birds chirping. Next we're just going to head down these stairs, still following the river, and it looks so pretty with all of this moss. I love this part of the route already with all of the moss and the ivy, the sun just coming through the trees. The walk took us along the river through the peaceful Swilla Glen. The steep side of Glen was shaped by the river twist cutting through layers of limestone since the last ice age. After walking a little way upstream, we came across the popular money tree. We've just come across the money tree, and this is a seriously full money tree. Supposedly, if you stick a coin in this tree, then it brings you good luck. It looks pretty full. I'm not sure you can fit any more in there now. There's a sign next to here that says most of them are two peas, but there might be some really old coins in here as well. Look, can you see someone stuck a two pound coin in here? really gone all out. They really want some good luck. There's various information signs on the way around which really add to the walk. So for example there's this one here that tells you there's some oak on the trail. Not only will you see oak but the woodland consists of other native trees such as hazel, ash and birch. We just spotted this sign here that says do not enter because there's orchid seedlings grown by the Royal Botanic Gardens at Kew. They've been reintroduced at this site by English Nature. So we've just walked along this path here on the right and up those steps. And look at this beautiful view behind us back down the river. It's gorgeous. I did say at the start of the trail that it can take, what was it, about two and a half to four hours? Yep. However, we keep getting so distracted that from here to, where are we now? Manor Bridge. Manor Bridge has taken us an hour. So we'll see you in December. <laughs> Next we're going to go across the River Twist via Manor Bridge. Oh, and it looks like it's one of those bridges that you can see through. Ah, oh, look at this beautiful view up the river. Now we continue following the path up the river on the other side. First waterfall of the day, off in the distance. It says there are five main waterfalls at Pecker Falls, dropping 30 metres over sandstone into bedded with slate. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it on the camera, but here we go, long distance waterfall. I can see a bridge there though, so we're gonna go get closer. So we're just crossing the bridge. I'm here on the right, ooh, wow. When you follow the route up, it takes you up to the top part of Pekka Falls, so you can get a closer look at those top waterfalls that we saw earlier. From that last viewing platform, you then go further up the steps, drop back down, and we've got another viewing platform for more falls. Paths continuing to lead us just alongside the falls. Just above Peckle Falls was Hollybush Spout, where the water squeezed through the rocks above a steep drop and was projected into the pool below. After having seen a sign at the start of the walk saying to look out for dippers on the trail, 
we were pretty excited to spot this little guy bobbing around the rocks at the bottom of the fall. So now we're going to go just up these stairs here. We followed the steps further up, through a gate and out into the open moorland. So we're just carrying on following the river, which is all the way down there. Can't see it yet, but can hear the next waterfall as we're rounding the corner. Here we go. Here it is. This one is Thornton Foss. Thornton Foss is the final waterfall on the River Twiss. Cascading from a height of 14 metres, even though the weather had been quite dry before our trip, the fall still looks really impressive. I can only imagine how powerful this waterfall must look after heavy rain. Not only is the area around Thornton Foss a great place to stop and relax, but the pool below is a popular spot for wild swimming. It wasn't quite warm enough to swim for us, but it was still fun to wobble on gracefully around on the rocks and take in the amazing waterfall from different angles. We spent a while enjoying the sparkling waters of Thornton Foss before moving on. We came from that path there, followed it right down here, and Thornton Foss was just down there behind that tree. And now we're following these stairs up. Just taking a moment to have a look at the view back there. It's a really nice day as well. It's actually starting to get quite warm, wasn't expecting that. Could have gone for a swim. Oh, it's getting a bit windy around here. After crossing Raven Ray Bridge, we headed steadily upwards, leaving the river twist behind us as we now had reached the highest point of the walk. We followed Twistleton Lane surrounded by rolling green hills that stretched as far as the eye could see. We're coming upon a farm on our right now. Imagine living here and just having the waterfalls basically right in your back garden. Lambs! We're not sure but we think that might be Ingleborough off in the distance which is one of the three peaks. We're planning to walk one of those soon. Found another sign of interesting stuff. But it's about the quarry. Ingleborough. Yeah, cool, it was. Next set of waterfalls is Beasley Falls. I think people come canyoneering down here. To the back there's the larger falls, and then it leads down here to the triple spout. With the large drops, the powerful waterfalls, and the river crashing through the rugged gorge, it's easy to see why Beasley Falls is used for canyoning trips. We followed the River Doe downstream until we reached what was probably my favourite part of Ingleton Waterfalls Trail. Now we're heading down to this bridge to stand over the gorge. I'm so excited for this bit, it looks really cool. Over the view bridge. It's another one where you can see through the floor. Look at that. Oh my gosh, and if you look straight down now that makes your knees wobble. I'm not scared of heights, but... Whew. Ah, and just here on the left behind us through the trees, we can see snow falls, which I think is the last falls of the trail. Unlike many of the falls on this trail, you can't get close to these ones, but they still looked really impressive from the viewing platform. The trail finally led us away from the River Doe and through old limestone quarries before reaching the road back into Ingleton. Once back in the village, it was easy to follow signs back to the car park. Now I will cover the information you need to know before your trip to Ingleton Waterfalls Trail. Firstly, how to get there. Ingleton Waterfalls Trail is located on the edge of Ingleton Village around 25 miles away from Skipton. Set your sat-nav to LA63ET. The trail has its own car park and parking is included in the cost of your ticket. However, if you plan to visit on a weekend, then make sure you arrive early as spaces are available on a first-come, first-served basis. You don't need to pre-book your ticket though, just show up. As mentioned earlier in this video, admission is £8 per adult and £4 per child. This money goes towards the upkeep of the walk as most of it falls on private land. 
In terms of difficulty, if you're reasonably fit and are wearing adequate footwear, then you'll be fine. However, there are stairs leading you up and down and, while overall the route is well maintained, there are sections where the path is uneven, with roots and rocks sticking out of the ground. This does mean that the route is unsuitable for wheelchairs and pushchairs. Many of the steps do have sturdy handrails, however there are sections without. You are provided with a map when you arrive, although you don't really need it for navigation. The path is well defined and there are a few signs along the way, so I think you would have to really try to get lost. The trail is open 7 days a week all year round except for Christmas Day. If you'd like to bring your dog then yes they are allowed, although you will need to put them on a lead when crossing farmland. In terms of facilities, there are two sets of toilets before you enter the trail and then another set halfway round at Beasley Farm. For refreshments, there is a cafe at the trail entrance and a refreshment cabin at Beasley Farm, although they are only open on weekends and during summer months. However, you can take your own food, so we happily had a picnic by the waterfalls, plus there was an ice cream van halfway around the trail. A one-way system is currently in place to ensure that social distancing can be maintained, which is pretty handy because there are parts of the walk that gets very narrow. I hope you enjoyed our video from Ingleton Waterfalls Trail. We do have a playlist of other walks in Yorkshire, which I will link here. If you are also looking for things to do that aren't countryside walks, then we do have videos of other places to visit around the UK and beyond, so pop over to our channel if you are looking for inspiration for your future trips. Thanks for watching.